Welcome in. My name is Arya and I'm a research analyst at finchat.io, the world's greatest stock research platform. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at probably one of the highest value add segments of our website. Of course, that's going to be the charting tab. And so in today's video, the goal really is to kind of show you how to use it, how to be able to make beautiful charts where you could drive valuable insights. So without further ado, the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the finchat.io website. And in order to actually access the charting section, you're going to want to search up any business that you'd like. And instead of going through the default analysis tab, what we're going to want to do is go over to the charting tab. And so the benefits of doing that is that you're not looking at just that company that you searched up, for example, Apple in our case here, this way you could bring in multiple different companies. And so it's a pretty straightforward interface in the top right search bar, you're able to pull any different company that you like. So for demonstration sake, I'm going to pull up Visa and then I'm also going to pull up MasterCard. And so now when I go over to the search bar on the left, I'm able to pull from more than 20,000 different metrics. So for example, just to keep it simple, we're going to compare the total revenues of, of these two businesses. And upon clicking on total revenues, you'll see that the revenues of Visa and the revenues of MasterCard are independently populated in the charts below. Now, the issue we face here is that sometimes we don't want to have just the numbers in front of us and look at it on a company specific chart. Instead, we would like to actually compare the two on the same chart. So in order to do that, you're going to want to navigate over to the top right drop down, and you're faced with three different options here. So we're on by company, which shows it on a company basis. There's also by metric. So this would put uh, both of the total revenues on the same chart together. But the one that we're actually going to click on for now is single panel. And so what this does is regardless of the company or the metric that you have, it's going to put everything on the same chart. And so you'll see that with both Visa and MasterCard, they've both gradually grown from the mid 2000s until today. On the FinChat Pro tier, which you're looking at right now, you're able to get 20 years of historical data. And by the way, we actually offer a two week free trial with no card required. Top link in the description if you'd like to give that a try. Again, it's just a risk-free sort of method for you to actually try our website. But going back to it, we're able to see the gradual growth of both these businesses and the overall trend with them until today. But you know, the chart looks a tad bit cluttered. And so what we're going to want to do is go up and on the actual total revenues metric that we've selected, we're given a handful of different options. I'm just going to click on this line chart option here. And what you'll see is that now we have the total revenues of these two businesses as a line chart, and it kind of cleans it up a little bit more. You're able to depict the trend of things over time a little bit better. And then additionally, if you'd like to see them as a stacked bar chart, that option is available to you as well. This is particularly helpful if you're actually looking at uh, different revenue segments of the same business. And to show you that, I'm going to actually get rid of Visa and MasterCard for now. I'm going to also get rid of our total revenues metric. Instead, we're going to pull up Apple. And so sometimes what some investors would want to do is use that stacked bar chart to see the total amount of two different revenue segments. So for example, the iPhone revenues and the Mac revenues. And so this is actually another one of our features that investors find a lot of value in. It's our segments and KPIs data. And actually FinChat.io is the only place in the world where all these different KPIs are aggregated. We have over 2000 company specific metrics that we track on a quarterly basis. And again, there is no other stock research platform that does it to our scale. So what you're going to want to do is, for example, we've pulled up Apple here, and then you're going to want to go down to the segments and KPIs tab, click on Apple, and you're given a handful of different segments for all the different revenues of, for example, the iPhone, the Mac, the iPad, so on and so forth. Additionally, your revenues are sorted by geography. We have gross profit of products and the services such as iTunes, Apple Care, the gaming subscription, uh, actually the 30% sort of take rate that they have in the app store as well is also included in there. You can also break it down on a geography basis by operating income. And then in terms of K uh, KPIs just for Apple, they only report uh, installed user base. So what we're going to actually do to kind of showcase this off, I'm going to pull in the iPhone revenue. And additionally, I'm going to be pulling in the Mac revenue the iPad revenue, and you know what, we'll do the wearables as well. So for example, your watch, your AirPods, that type of stuff. And then additionally, the last one that I'm going to pull in here is the services revenue. Now, what you'll see with this is that in terms of the just just the bar charts on their own, again, it's a little bit messy, and it's a little bit hard to kind of drive trends from and that type of stuff. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to click on the stacked bar chart to have them all form into a single bar. This way you're able to see the trend of these different revenue segments 
over the past give or take 12 years. Additionally, this is just a personal preference of mine. I'm going to click on the buy company just so we get the Apple logo. This is especially useful because uh, if you're someone that's going to be sharing these charts to friends or on your social media pages, when you go to download, it's nice to have that Apple logo at the top there. By the way, while we're here, you could always uh, set custom names for these. So for example, you could just say uh, Apple revenue by segment, and then you could export it from there. Now, another thing I'm going to point out while we're here is that you'll see that when you have way too large of numbers, so in the case of Apple, you know, we're dealing with five, six digit numbers. Again, it just seems a little bit cluttered when you go to export these charts. So fix around that is that we actually let you change how these numbers are represented. You could have it in millions, which is the default, or you could have it in billions. And then additionally, you could increase the decimal points. You can also decrease the decimal points. In the case of some investors who invest in uh, foreign companies, you can also change to the local currency. So for example, a company like Alibaba in the local Chinese currency, as opposed to the reported US dollars. And so one other thing that I'm going to show off here, if we go all the way back to the total revenues, you'll see that Apple is over time quite a cyclical business. And so oftentimes what investors want to kind of look at is to look at the overall trend of it on a quarterly basis. Now, of course, again, you could just go down to the actual quarterly view, but you run into the same issue of uh, Q4 always being the highest revenue um, quarter for Apple. And generally Q2 is a slower quarter for this business. So instead, what we're going to do is well, over here on the annual view, it adds all the quarters within a calendar year. The last 12 month view adds up the four trailing quarters and that does it every single quarter. So for example, in Q4 2022, it added up the total between uh, Q1 to Q4. Uh, in over here, Q2 2023, it added up Q3 of the year prior, Q4, Q1 and Q to 2023. And so it does that on a, on a quarterly view, but it takes the trailing 12 months of revenue and adds it all up together. And so when we flow down to this view, you could see overall a smoother trend. And perhaps a, a better way for me to kind of represent this to you guys is to look at a business such as uh, Uber. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the free cash flows and let's get rid of Apple here. So you'll see with Uber on, for example, an annual view, it kind of looks like this on a quarterly view. It's Again, kind of all over the place in any given quarter, there's uh, sort of significant swings. But then when you click on the last 12 month view, this is where you'll be able to see a very clear trend of moving from massive unprofitability to today where they uh, have done about $7 billion of free cash flow in the past 12 months. And so one last thing uh, before we end off the video here, I'm going to pull in Google for now and we're actually going to start looking at valuation because that's another thing that we track on the website. So in order to look at that, you could go down to ratios. You have forward valuation, trailing valuation, but over here in the popular selections, I'm just going to pull in forward PE for now. And so what this does is it pulls the past 10 years of historical data that we have on all these different valuation metrics for effectively every single company. And this is something that a lot of our customers are finding a lot of value in because you're very easily able to kind of look at and see that there's some historical ranges where Google tends to be undervalued. So for example, just kind of eyeing it here, it seems that when it approaches roughly the 18 PE range, it seems to be near the bottom in terms of valuation for Google. But then another sort of key feature that particularly works well with the valuation metrics, if you head over to the gear icon in the top right, you're given a handful of different options. So for example, you could toggle the average line. And what this does is it takes the average PE of Google over the past 10 years. And so you can see that currently it trades at roughly 20 times forward PE, that's slightly below the 10 year average PE that Google tends to trade at. But of course you can see that when you're taking in the average, there's a lot of big swings that are sort of outliers, uh, both to the upside and the downside. And so what you might want to do is you might want to take the median line, which sort of better represents the actual true middle point in terms of where this valuation is. Additionally, to actually see what that high point was, we have both a maximum and minimum line that shows you that the trough earnings multiple that Google traded at was about 15 times forward earnings at the bottom in uh, 2023. And then the maximum forward PE they traded at was 30, roughly 34 times in August of 2020. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Feel free to reach out to us through our help center if you have any questions or concerns, which can be found under the settings icon on the left-hand side of your screen. Have a great day.